Hey, good evening, family. Um, before I go to bed, this is how the Lord works. I was literally getting ready to pass out. Um, and this happened. So I'm going to share it with you, and then I'm going to share some scripture, all right? Um, so sharp, late to life, willing to share our wisdom. And yeah. Wonderful lady. And a really an inspiration to all teachers. Mm -hmm. Teachers That's everywhere. Amazing. The Colorado State Capitol is ready for its Christmas tree. Nine News reporter Mark Salinger introduces us to Mr. Christmas Tree, who's cut down the perfect tree for the occasion for the past 25 years. The holidays are stressful. So we'll look around a little bit more. Will they like what you choose? There's a sweet spot between it being too narrow and too long. Do they want something different? One year we got them a 30-foot tree. Uh, they said that that was a little too big. If you think buying yeah. gifts is hard, it's a little narrow up at the top. Try picking out the perfect Christmas tree for the entire state. It sits right there in the center, the foyer there in the Capitol building, so yeah, it gets seen by a lot of people. If anyone is up for the challenge, yeah, yeah, it's Mike Hughes. They call me the Christmas tree guy or Mr. Christmas tree. For the past 25 years, Mr. Christmas tree has scoured the state for the fullest, mm -hmm. tallest, best looking one. tree there is. I had my eye on this last year. Let's just hope the tree he chooses for the Capitol is better than the one he puts up in his house. My Christmas tree's never that great looking. I'm one of these guys that doesn't mind a Charlie Brown tree. This year, this is the one. He settled on a subalpine fir growing near the Wyoming border in northern Larimer County. My only hesitation on it is it gets a little narrow there. And just That's an like axe. The nearly 200 mile trip to the state capitol begins. One, two, three. Albeit a bit slow. <sighs> but with a little muscle. I think we can lift a little bit too. And a lot of people. <sighs> Next stop's the Capitol. Mr. Christmas Tree delivers Colorado its first gift of the holidays. In Larimer County, I'm Mark. All right. So. I'm back. There it goes. All right. So here we go. Um, I'm going to give you scripture. We're going to go straight to the book. We just talked about it last night. I'm going to give you scripture because if I give you my own opinion, then I'm not, I, I, I'm leaning on myself. I'm being very carnal. Okay. Um, I cannot lie. I sh struggled with this and I still somewhat struggle with it. I'm not even going to lie. But I cannot deny the word of God because I trust and believe the word of God. So I'm going to give you why I believe what I believe. All right, let's go. So, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, it says... Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. We just saw the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it, it move not. They are upright. I'm going to keep going because I'm going to show you some more stuff. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Sound familiar? They must, they must needs be born because they cannot go. But not afraid, uh, be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also 
is it in them to do good? Here's some references. Psalms 115.5, Isaiah 41.23, and I'm actually going to show you 1 Corinthians 12.2. All right, let's keep going. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in, uh, great in might. Who would not fear thee? Okay, let's keep going. O King of Nations, for to thee doth it appeareth, uh, part- excuse me, doth it appear. Uh, uh, I'm trying to read through the phone, it keeps blurring. Appertain, so, uh, for as much as among all of the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. But thee, but they are Altogether, altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Stock, a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphus, whatever. The work of the workmen and of the hands of the founder, Lou, purple, Blah, 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 blah. They are all work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations not to be able to abide. See, it keeps blurring. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to stay with it so that you guys can read it. Thus shall, they, thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. In the voice, there's a multitude of water. Okay, he talks about how mighty the Lord is. This is Jeremiah. Every, I like this. This is the part. Every man is brutish in his... Knowledge, every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Okay? So that's what the Word of God says in Jeremiah. Now I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 2, right here. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Watching me, whatever. There it goes. That's the point. You guys have no idea how long I have battled this. And I even used to call out Brother Joseph when I was still blinded and wanted to partake in these falsehoods, these vanities, these cunning men in their fables and this and that and the other. I wanted so badly to hold dearly to my Christmas. But if I'm going to be a true Christian... If I'm going to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, I will, and I am called to, in um, Ephesians 5.11. Let's see if I can find it for you real quick. It's easier to see in this one. I mean, I know it by heart, but I just want you to see it because I don't want you guys to think that I am... Making up my own stuff here. But in Ephesians 5.11, good night, Irene. Sorry, it's taking me a minute. I have just one hand. I'm over here trying to film and trying to do this at the same time. Well, I mean, I, you know what? I, I tell you what. I'm going to just tell you right here. Here we go. Ephesians 5.11 says...
it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. That is why we do what we do. That is why I feel the Lord has called me in fellowship with my brothers and sisters out there in the world who expose the wickedness. It is, has nothing to do with my personal feelings. It has nothing to do with, you know, if it gives me joy or not. Um, yes, before I was uh, God's slave. Yeah, definitely, Brother Joseph. Before I became God's slave. Yes, I am God's slave. He bought me. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, he bought you. But I never used to act like this. Uh, I never used to... I never used to heed his instructions. I, I, I love the Lord with all my heart. And I believe that Christ raised him from the dead. But I was a believer, not a disciple of Jesus Christ. I was a believer, not a disciple. And um, I tell you what, guys, Jesus told Nicodemus, truly, truly, I tell you, that unless a man be born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom. Talks about it many times. My point is, is that for the longest time I was confrontational. And, um, you know, I would want to get a rise out of people. Especially if they wanted to throw down. I'd love to fight. I, I'm not going to lie. I was a fighter. I used to love to fight. And I thank God that he took that from me. So the point of me telling you that por portion of it is that this has nothing to do with me. I'm not trying to get a rise out of you. In fact, to be honest with you, I'm not even trying to get you to follow what I'm telling you. I want you to test everything according to the word of God. The word of God says, test every spirit. <coughs> I'm, excuse me, tired. Test every spirit according to the word of God. So if you call yourself a Christian, fantastic, but live like it, live like it, follow his commandments. All right. Um, Cause there's been a lot about this lately and we had a conversation about it last night and you know, people, you know, just, they don't, they don't, they don't want to take us our word for it. That's fine. I don't want you to study this stuff yourself. Look up where it even started. You, I'm just going to give a story. I'm not even going to name names, but a sister in Christ said that uh, an uh, agnostic or atheist, I don't even know what he is, even told her that, yeah, I'm sorry, so-and-so, uh, this is a pagan holiday. Because that dude studied it. Even though he's agnostic and atheist or whatever he is, he studied it and told the sister in Christ that, yeah, this is pagan. But it still crushes her enough that it makes her uncomfortable. And that's okay. The Bible says that that, you know, a, rebu a rebuke or a repro reproof or correction, I, I get, I'm all tongue twisted and tired here, is not going to feel well. A chastening does not feel well. Nobody wants to be corrected, man. We all have pride. We all have egos. But again, don't take my word. I'm nobody without Christ. I'm nobody without his, his word. So don't take my word for it. Again, the scriptures, Jeremiah chapter 10. And you saw the other, you know, references 
um, you know, uh, Psalms, what was it, uh, 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 híjole, where is it? It was Psalms 115, Isaiah something or another, and then 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. We all know who the Gentiles were, right? They were the outsiders. They were the unbelievers. Okay? They were sent. Paul, Paul, Jesus came to Paul and he said, I'm going to make you their teacher, their rabbi, their leader, their, their, their disciple, their, uh, uh, excuse me, their, uh, um, ay, yeah, yeah, I am tired. Their apostle. You're going to teach them. And that's what Paul's telling him. You guys were once Gentiles. You guys used to follow this craziness. Grow up. And that's all I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. Please take the word of God for it. Do your research on, online. Find out the backbones of this, where it rooted from. And then let's have a civil conversation rather than sitting there and being like, Oh, who are you? You're some sort of Christian. Da, 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 people, man. Híjole, you guys crack me up. I'm too tired to even deal with it right now. As you can tell, I sound like Barry White all of a sudden. All right, guys, I'm going Mimi's. Peace.